Hey YouTube, welcome to my chicken coop, or should I say our chicken coop. This is kind of a, a co-op with the neighbor. I'm standing in a pasture, that one of our pastures that's between my neighbor's house and here, and she wanted chickens. I had an empty chicken coop. So I brought it over here, and this is where the chickens are. And you say, well, what's this got to do with the kind of videos you do, Preston? Well, let me show you. Get out of here, chicken. This is what brings us to the chicken coop. I decided that having to come out here and open and close the door to the coop every morning and every evening was fine. You know, neighbor likes to get out. I don't mind doing it periodically. But what about when it's really cold? Or it's like two in the morning and you're like, did I close the chicken coop? So I thought, hey, let's automate it. So this is the control panel for my automated chicken coop door. It's uh, real simple, two buttons, up, down, while it's in motion, if you hit either one of them again, the door stops, a little indicator light, and you'd say, well, you still gotta get up and push the button. Ah, oh, nay nay, cellular antenna. Let's take a look inside. All right, with the help of the broom handle, we got the door held open. This is the inside. Over here on the door on the left are the two push buttons that we could see from the outside. Um, these are some really crazy nice push buttons. I wound up getting them at an electronic surplus store here in the area for uh, real cheap. So hey, we're, we're going with it. Over here, we've got uh, our power supply down below here, which is coming in and feeding two components. It's feeding the uh, H bridge which also has a five volt regulator, which is feeding this little, uh, it's actually a spark fun, spark fun blue board. It is uh, the equivalent of a uh, Arduino Uno. The uh, 12 volts coming in is also supplying power here to this little, it's actually a battery eliminator circuit for the RC hobby. And it is supplying power to the charging circuit on the cell phone board. This is a, a phone board from Adafruit. And this is the uh, single cell LiPo that's being charged. Uh huh, we hear you. So the reason for the battery is basically it acts as a giant capacitor. Um, when the cell phone activates, uh, I think we're gonna have chicken dinner tonight. When the cell phone activates and starts acquiring a signal, it goes to full power, which draws almost two amps. So it's a, for a very short period of time, but I, I wasn't able to easily or successfully create my own battery eliminator to completely get rid of the battery. So this way did just fine. And then uh, right here in the middle, little Piazza buzzer. Um, right now, that's only activated uh, when you first power it up, and I'll show you, show you what it does when it goes through its sequence. Um, I will be changing the firmware at some point just to uh, have a little more fun. I'm going to make it beep uh, just before the door closes or just before the door opens and see if I can train the chickens to come in if they're still outside. So anyways, H-Bridge and 5-Volt Regulator, Arduino Uno, Adafruit Fona, 5-Volt uh, Battery Eliminator, charging through the 5-Volt circuit where you would normally have a USB plugged in battery, switches, and we're good to go. So I wrote some code uh, that when you text it to this phone number, either the word open or close, it does just that, either opens or closes. So let's give it a try here. Middle of the day, the door is open. Let's close it. If we can spell close right. There we go. So the message is sending, it's sent, and then everything after this is just delay. The door has a 16 inch linear actuator on it, 12 volts with built in limit switches, and the rest of the material is what's called rigid PVC. Um, it's PVC board, half inch thick, glued together with a uh, PVC cement kind of like uh, an acrylic cement, it's very watery, uh, bonds together extremely well. 
Now it's a little dusty already. Um, unfortunately, this is the second time I've had to shoot this video because I goofed up the first ones systemically. Um, so it, it's already collected chicken dander. The linear actuator itself, and some of the reason for choosing this one is its design and its, its purpose was meant for moving solar panels uh, for tracking the sun. And as such, it's uh, outdoor rated, so I'm, I'm not too real concerned about the chicken dust. The motor's all sealed, it's not open for brushes. Otherwise, if you've had chickens, you know the dander gets everywhere. So if we look at the status light now, the status light is green and uh, the door is closed. And you say, well, why is green closed? That might seem a little backwards. Well, green means the chickens are safe. Um, everything will be fine. Really, the only reason we open and close the door is for predators coming in or out. So now if we want to open it back up, it opens back up. So at this stage of the game, there's no thing, there are no sensors on the door determining whether it jams, opened all the way or not. It's simply a timed function. And the way I get rid of, the way, the reason I get away with a timed function is because the linear actuator, oh, sorry, the chicken just fell, the linear actuator has limit switches on it and will just stop running. The application for this is pretty broad. Anything you want to motivate. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this little video. Until next time, take care. Really?